Hey lovelies, I hope that you're all doing well and staying safe. Uh, my video today is an interesting one, I think. <laughs> it's a video that I wanted to put out there into the world, the world of YouTube, because I watched a similar video, um, which was a being Pakistani and coming out or being Muslim and coming out. I can't remember exactly what the video title was called. Unfortunately, I cannot link it down below um, because it has been taken down. However, I watched it recently. I think it was last year and I was just like, started getting really emotional. I watched the whole thing and I watched it quite a few times. And it was just so nice to have somebody that was of a similar background to me that I could relate to. And our stories are very different, I would say. Um, however, it was still really nice to just be able to listen. And this was after coming out, I guess, to, you know, my family and, and most of the important people in my life. But it just, it really got to me. So I thought even if this video gets to one person that is going through something similar or at least needs that sort of, oh, there are other people out there um, from a similar background to me that have been through this and, you know, it's not just me, I don't feel as isolated, then I've done my job. <laughs> Let me go back a little bit. So I knew that something was up when it came to sexual orientation. Um, when I was about 11, 12, I realised that I found, you know, I may have a crush on a male. I don't know, celebrity or something, but I may also have those same feelings of what it would be to have a crush when you were that age um, for female celebrities or you know people in the media etc. I knew, I, I knew, I didn't know a lot about the LGBT plus community, nothing at all really I guess at that age um, but I knew that okay I'm slightly different. I put this to the back of my mind and there were certain instances and things that I'd, I saw when I was younger where I was like, oh, okay, like I don't know how to handle this in my head because in my head it's all great and it's and it's this exciting feeling of, oh my God, okay, I have, I also have feelings for females, etc. And like, this is, this is like something I want to explore. And it was almost like a good moment for me and an exciting moment for me for all of maybe five minutes and then it hit me of oh no that's that's a no so just for reference i am pakistani i am uh, well asian british um i was born in england grew up in england so my experience is very different to let's say if i grew up in pakistan but it's still very much obviously my family are Muslim. Um, I have parts of my family that aren't religious, parts of my family that are super religious. So it's still, you know, I, I was still immersed in the culture being brought up by a Pakistani family. So yeah, so then there was this impending feeling of doom of no, you need to hide this, you need to shove this to the back of your brain as soon as possible because you can never tell anyone about this, th these feelings that you're having. And that was purely because, not because I didn't feel, you know, close with my family or, you know, I didn't tell my mum things or we didn't have that sort of relationship, but I, I just knew with the way I'd been brought up, this is wrong. Like that's what I had in my head. It wasn't a case of this is right um, or this is acceptable, um, but my family won't understand. No, when you're that young and depending on the way you've been brought up, if you've been brought up with religion, it yeah, it's a case of no, this is wrong, period. In secondary school, there were moments... <laughs> There were some moments that um, made me realise, no, this is this is still there. This is not just, okay, I've thrown it, shut it away, like, um, locked it, put away the key, and then 
you know that's it. it it's gone no these feelings and emotions and the way I feel like I can't change that and I started to realize that so I got quite stressed about it in my head I explored different areas and by that I mean for example I you know saw an LGBT plus couple in the media and I was like in my head it, it was like a nice it was it was an exciting feeling and I was like wow okay um but also there was barely any representation I can't remember any representation of like cutie pot like people of color represented within the few shows that were about or few I guess like um characters within um soaps and uh, TV series etc uh, I can't really remember any and because of that and because there was no one speaking out about people coming out within um well for, for me South Asian societies I was just like oh okay maybe I'm just an anomaly <laughs> but not in a good way um and I knew obviously there would be other people out there but I was like but, but are people like out and proud because if you don't see it constantly within the media, even when you kind of try and fish out things um, and try and find them elsewhere and, and it's not easily accessible, like you can't find people that are just like, oh, you know, for example, oh, I'm Muslim and I'm gay, I'm Muslim and I'm queer, etc. Like there, was, there wasn't any of that. During my secondary school time, I was also going through the typical teenager like rebellious stage etc um and i was just questioning my religion a lot more i was super religious growing up as a uh, as a child i was like really really religious and then um i got to kind of teenage years and i just started i had too many questions to say that i was fully practicing muslim um I still had certain beliefs and that is, I, I guess that's personal to me, but it wasn't something like, okay, yeah, I'm really going to be a practicing Muslim, which is why I always express that. And I expressed that to my family. That was a whole nother, oh my God, not, not a good conversation. <laughs> because there wasn't a lot of representation, I was just in a bit of a rut, to be honest. And I remember someone at school, <laughs> um, one of my I would say close best friends at the time she basically said to me that she liked me and I remember this because it was in an English lesson um and it was a big deal and <laughs> I just like smiled and was just like frozen like this like what <laughs> um and it wasn't because I you know didn't like her or I didn't have a crush on her or, or I, I I was you know disgusted or annoyed by it or anything like that I was just like I don't know how to react in this situation and there was this whole like fear because that was instilled in me I guess through growing up and being super confused that I was like oh my god no 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 um um like eject <laughs> like abort <laughs> but I just couldn't um I just couldn't deal with it so fast track to uni and I was on a night out once there was this girl who was out and proud um and she was friends with somebody I knew at my part-time job anyways I I knew of her we went to <laughs> Attic in Windsor mm, it's this club that is not it's one of those clubs right that it's 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 local to you it's a shithole, but you love it because of the memories, I guess, that you make there, even though it is just shocking. <laughs> um, so, yeah, we went there and we ended up kissing. And I was like, wow. Like, even though my face might be like this, there's like fireworks and all this like crap going on all around my body. And I was just like, oh, my God. Then I had more experiences at university not loads but a few and yeah I was I was at that point where I was like I need to explore this side of me otherwise I will never be content in a relationship with a man um because there will always be a part of me that's like well there's this whole other side of me that I've shut out um in terms of attraction and forming a connection with someone that I've not allowed um, and I won't be fully happy in a relationship if I do not explore that side of me and, and truly understand who I am. It is 
a part of you it's not like i've chosen and ah oh, when people say this is a choice no it is not a choice if it was a choice i would have 100 percent chosen to be straight really straight now no not so much i wouldn't but before of course i would have chosen to be straight purely because it would have made my life so much easier i would have been normal i wouldn't have had this these conflicting feelings and, and quite a high like stress about this at such a young age you know i i would have i wouldn't have chosen i 100 percent wouldn't have chosen to be anything but straight is what i'm saying so let, let me just put that out there because a lot of people still say especially people i meet like oh that's interesting um so yeah i know that's your choice and it's just <laughs> frustrates me sorry off topic anyways had all these experiences and was like okay i am gonna have to explore this more i met my ex now but i met her at university and it was a life-changing moment for me i guess maybe i didn't know that at the time when i first met her and she was trying to convince me to do shots in her room with our friends and i kept declining because i can't me and shots aren't don't do well together but um but yeah so we ended up going starting a relationship later on in uni i think i was in third year when we started and i'd never been in a relationship with a woman before she had but still both quite new to i guess you know you're growing up you're uh getting to adulthood whatever that means and you're just trying to learn more about yourself and understand who you are right and we and we were trying to do that together and it was you know uh, ha like any relationship had its ups and downs but it was amazing to be able to just be me and not feel like I was shutting a part of me out. My family are Muslim, her family were Mormon. <laughs> it's like the best combination. I decided I couldn't take it anymore. She was worth it and I wanted to tell my very close family that I'm not straight. This is where the fun begins. I told, I wanted to tell my mum and Nan. So I actually spoke to my uncle who just for context is not religious at all. I spoke to my uncle and my auntie um, and I was so nervous telling my uncle. I remember we went to Prezzo and I just the whole time I was on edge because I wanted to tell him. Um, and at the end of the conversation, We'd been talking for, I don't know, an hour, an hour and a half, ha out, uh, words. It took me a while. It took me another probably half an hour to get the words out of my mouth of, I like girls too. <laughs> I think I'm bisexual. No, I know I'm bisexual. And he was super happy. He was like, thank you so much for telling me. And then he started laughing, which is typical of him. But he was like, oh, this is not going to go down well. <laughs> and I was like thanks so he helped me he kind of hyped me up to be able to tell my mum and nan and he was there when I told them um and I don't think I would have been able to tell them if it wasn't for him being there I really don't think so I told them and I I said something on the lines of I just needed to tell you something because I love you so much and I don't want to lie about who I am and how I'm feeling. Please note this is not easy for me. I wasn't saying it as smooth as this. I was freaking out and shaking. Um, but I said that and I was like, okay, I am not straight. I like men, but I also like women. And you know my friend so-and-so we are not just friends <laughs> we are in a relationship silence one hour later two hours later serious like it was <laughs> you could hear a pin drop for a while a good while 
and then I was like please feel free to ask me any questions and my nan was just kind of in shock but also she was just trying to take everything in my mum oh I could see the anger building like I could see the anger building on her face and I was scared like not in terms of uh, because she's gonna like I don't know I just I was really scared of her reaction I'm not going to repeat what my mum said to me that day, but it wasn't nice. I've never heard my mum say some of the things that she said that day. And I'm not hating on her or anything like that. We have a really close relationship. Anyone who knows me knows that. But the things that came out of her mouth that day were horrible and they were heartbreaking. And the fact that she could say those to a child because of the amount of anger she felt was just like, I wasn't... I tried to mentally prepare myself for that moment, but just to let you know, like, I don't think there's ever anything that can mentally prepare you for that moment because you have no idea how that moment is going to go. And a lot of the times, unfortunately, with Asian parents, it's not going to go well. Um, yeah, it didn't go well, basically. And then she went upstairs and basically, she. the one thing I will say is she was just like, not in my house like if you you want to be this way you know then out basically and i genuinely thought she was going to kick me out and i was like i didn't think it was going to go this bad i went downstairs i was crying my eyes out because she just lost it and she slammed the door and just didn't want to see me didn't want to look at me she, and oh i i will say this was one day before my graduation my uh, bachelor's graduation i decided to do it then why who knows and she just lost it um i was crying obviously i came downstairs and my nan grabbed me oh this moment was really really emotional um oh. <laughs> my nan grabbed me and she just like grabbed me gave me a hug and just wouldn't let go and she was just like noel i know this is a big deal and I'm not saying that I completely understand or I, like I'm okay with it at the moment but at the same time this doesn't change who you are you are still like Al Nawal you know this is a part of you but it's not you know it's not going to change how I think of you how much I love you I love you so much and she was just you know saying all these things and I, I I like broke down even more because I was just like I couldn't believe that she was so not necessarily accepting of that but just she was realized you know it didn't change it was a part of me but it didn't define me and that moment meant the world to me and props to her because I didn't expect her to react like that at all and it really really helped me get through the coming months with my mum that were just not easy at all if you're thinking of coming out um and struggling with it i think you have to weigh it up if you are in a position where you could get kicked out you don't have the money to support yourself you know you are in danger of being physically hurt or anything like that because of how you think they will react sometimes it is best to wait save up put all your efforts into kind of saving up and moving away from that environment before you have that conversation and i would definitely um suggest that but if you feel like, okay, it's not going to be, it's going to be a tough ride. But at the end of the day, I don't feel like, you know, I'm going to be in any physical sort of danger or insecurity as in, you know, like I said, being kicked out or anything, then, um, there's no right way to go for it and you can you can watch so many coming out videos. You can, you know, watch people on YouTube talking about it. You can um prepare yourself you can write a script for yourself you can literally practice it in the mirror you can practice it with a friend and i don't think anything truly prepares you for that moment so sometimes you just have to take a deep breath and be like i'm just gonna do it today is the day i'm doing it end of and um, that's what i did it wasn't a sort of a pre-planned thing i was just like i'm gonna do it 
I definitely regretted it on the day because of the stress that I went through. Um, but now I'm just so glad that I got it out there and I did it. If possible, I would say talk to somebody that may be in your family or close to your family um, that would be more accepting or you, you are quite certain that they will accept you a lot more than maybe your your, uh, your direct parents, etc. But yeah, uh, I also I did loads of things prior to... To coming out to try and prepare myself i even watched was it ali hills she made like a video that you can send to people about like it is basically a coming out video i will link it down below because it, it made me so happy and it just made me laugh continuously i did not use that video to come out but i think you know whatever way you feel comfortable really um yeah i just i just sending you as much positivity as i can and do know that it will get better whether that be because they're um you know people that may not be okay with it their mindset changes their you know time heals how they're feeling they start to get a bit more involved with you know parents of lgbt plus kids or you know anything like that or whether it be the opposite and you just you start accepting yourself more you feel that as a way of being free and immersing yourself in the community things will get better and it can feel like this is going to be the end of the world but i promise you it won't be and that's something i will say is that time does heal relationships a lot and i feel like a lot of people even people that have had way worse experiences than me they were kicked out they have no contact with their family yes unfortunately for some people like that will never change once they come out but for a lot of people even if it's three years four years five years down the line they get back in contact with their family and form or build some form of relationship back again. And for me, my mum will never accept it. Like my mum will never accept fully who I am, but she is dealing with it better. It got to a point where uh, my ex was invited to things that she could come to my, you know, birthday gatherings, even like my mum would buy her a present for her birthday. Um, on my mum's birthday if, if I wanted to bring somebody obviously it would it would be her and that was okay so it got it got better I think the problem is with I guess not being like oh I, I am still attracted and feel like I can form this bond um and you know emotional sexual connection whatever it is with men also it gives that sort of oh but she might end up with a man Yes, there is a possibility. I'm not saying there is not no possibility of that. However, I think she, my mum still has that hope and she's kind of banking on that. Maybe she's not, but she had this whole dream. It's all about the dream of, you know, the way I get married and the big wedding, the big like Asian wedding and the, 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 the I don't know, saving up gold for, for me and all of that stuff and just the culture and everything and then that gets shattered and it's hard it's really really hard for her another reason why it's super hard for families is because they're scared of what people are gonna think it's always about what are other people gonna think oh my god what are they gonna say they're gonna blame us all of that and i get it and that's why i didn't openly just tell everyone or like throw it out on social media because i was like there are people in my family that still don't know and um so if they see this huh <laughs> fair enough um that will probably disown me they're gonna blame they're gonna blame my mum single you know brought me up as a single mother for most of my life etc blame my nan and that's always what happens which frustrates me oh, frustrates me to no end however there's nothing i can really do about that which is why i haven't been i guess as out and proud as i would like to be just because i'm trying to save them also and save them from any extra pain from this um but I, I think it gets to a point in your life where you're just like i just don't care anymore i'm not living my life for them they're not even close people in my life what like just because they're family do they even do they do we have you know close contact do they even talk to me very often do they care about me um we don't have that sort of relationship so why am i hiding a part of myself in fear that you know they're gonna judge me they 
they're probably judging me every day um from i don't know seeing social media or anything like that so it does get to a point uh it definitely gets to a point where i was just like i don't care anymore like i really don't and that's that's where i'm at now um yes it's still gonna hurt sometimes when you hear judge judgmental comments but I think once you let go of all the stresses and fears of, of coming out and you actually make that step to do so, um, for me, it meant that I could get way more involved within the LGBT plus community. And I did so like through work networks and just, I guess, exploring different events and going to my first club, like, um, club nights etc and it blew my mind like, especially like certain events like uh lick events uh lick events i think i went to and pussy palace and stuff and they um are specifically for people of color and it was just amazing to feel part of the community and i was like right okay so there are so this is where everyone's been hiding but when you're not immersed in the community you you can feel very very isolated uh, I, I think that helped me not care as much because I felt like, well, worse comes to worse. And I don't know, the rest of my family say to me, screw you, uh, you're not going to be a part of this family anymore. I would still have or uh, have another family or have another community to fall back on that I know will always have my back. So I guess that's one way to look at it. But yeah, I'm f I feel quite happy making this video. I was very skeptical about making it because I was like, oh, um, people are going to judge me. So please be kind if you comment on this video, comment with some love and some heart emojis. I do kind of want to get down to the nitty gritty of labelling. I know that in this video I've mentioned or came out as bisexual. However, I'm not sure that label fits me the best, but that's a whole different video of the pressure of labels. I, just, I wish everybody that is having doubts about coming out or is struggling with their sexuality and just going through their you know teenage years and growing up and going you know i wish i could just be me it doesn't even have to be your teenage years it can be your adult years it can be at any point in your life and i'm just sending you so much love i'm sending you a big cuddle and if anybody ever wants to message me about uh about this especially people of color um that are struggling within their community to to come out or at least be out and proud um yeah just please feel free to message me i will link my social media down below um please feel free to comment on this video and yeah just sending you so much love guys